I make copies of other people's keys for personal use. What? Whenever anyone lets me borrow a key, usually to their house in order to pet sit, the first thing I do is go to Walmart and make a copy of that key for personal use after they ask it for it back. I never break into houses and steal anything other than food or maybe alcohol. So you do steal. But I love the feeling of being able to effortlessly enter a place I know I don't belong without anyone's knowledge. I have keys to multiple people's houses and a couple of buildings and garages from my old job. Yeah, I don't steal anything except for the stuff that I steal. I decide the value of other people's things. This just seriously creeped me out. These people trusted you with their key and you violated that so badly. My mother-in-law was burgled and it wasn't so much the stuff she'd lost, it was the feeling of someone being in the house unwelcome that hurt her so badly. She frantically cleaned for over a week while crying and for it to be a friend in this case makes things worse. Also, taking a beer or some snacks is really screwed up. People notice that and then they'll feel uneasy and insane. That's just playing mind games. Really need to get some help for that. Yeah, never has a confession here made me more quickly think, fuck this person. The casual nature of such a creepy confession is really jarring. I like to violate trust. I mean, yeah, if you want to put it in five words, that's what he said. I met my current boyfriend by slipping him my number while he was on a date with someone else and I was their server. I used to work at a cheesecake factory as a server. About one and a half years ago, my current boyfriend came in with some other girl on a date. I'm not sure what it is about my boyfriend, but he just does it for me. He's not at all my normal type of guy. I'm a attracted to, but for some reason, he just makes me melt every time I look at him. He's got this super self-assured smile and something about the way he talks gets me. He's got this little chuckle he does and he always looks down and bites his lip after. He's just like it for me. So I immediately rushed over to their table. Typically, if I saw a guy I was attracted to, I could give better service because I genuinely wanted to interact with him and everyone at the table and that usually led to nicer tips. When I started serving them, I couldn't help myself and I was flirting super obviously. So much so, my coworkers were telling me to be careful I didn't and get complained on, but he flirted back. So I was like a shark who smelled blood in the water. I spent so much time talking to him at their table, other tables I was serving had to call out to me because I'd forget about them. Honestly, looking back, that was more of a date for me and him than her and him because we talked about what he did for work, what I studied, what my favorite foods are, what he likes, music. I must've been at that table accumulatively for around 40 minutes. At the end of it, she was being very short with me and him and I kind of figured she'd complain. So I said, screw it. Scribbled my number down and put it under his card when I gave it back to him. He texted me that night and we've basically been dating since. I'm moving in with him on Friday. It was honestly a very rude and shitty thing to do, but I'd do it over again in a second. In high school, I went to the movies with this girl to go see Fantastic Mr. Fox. The security guard ID'd her on the way in and mentioned that he knew her from another school. We showed up early to play arcade games, but it ended up just me playing by myself for 15 minutes while she texted with his security guard. Our movie started at 5.45 and ended just after 7. 15 minutes into the movie, she says she's going to the bathroom. About 20 minutes later, I noticed that she took her coat with her. But maybe she was going out for a cigarette? Well, the movie ends and I go to a messenger on Facebook and see that she's tagged in bar pics and the security dude was there. I commented, what the f and she blocked me. It wasn't the first or last time that things like this have happened, but it was most blatantly the, the disrespectful. When I was a server and had to wait on a couple, I would always pay more attention to the girl, especially if I found the fella attractive. That's how I got better tips. Oh, you both deserve each other. Reread this when he cheats on you. Uh-oh. Why would you go with a guy who accepted a number while out on a date? That's a fantastic question. Because his little chuckle is hot. Duh. <laughs> Bites lip. I've stolen hundreds of dollars worth of water just by saying five words. My college is a food court in one of the main buildings. Chick-fil-A, sandwich place, salad bar, etc. You get your food and pay at the exit. Every single time I've eaten lunch there since I was a freshman, I grab a bottle of water with my meal, walk up to pay and say, I brought the water in. The employees aren't paid enough to care and I pay enough in tuition to not feel bad about it. It's a win-win situation. I absolve you of your sins. Enjoy your water. Chick-fil-A gives out free large waters if you ask. Yeah, but that's not as fun. Not having your own water bottle is pleb tier. I run a fake restaurant on a delivery app. I registered a company, bought all the takeaway boxes from Amazon, signed up for a few delivery apps, made a few social media accounts, and printed leaflets that I drop in mailboxes. I resell microwave meals. On some meals, I add something to make them look better, like cheese. So far, it's around 200 bucks a day in revenue. Nobody suspects a thing. Soon 
someone will come in for hygiene inspection. You misspelled hygiene, so that's already not a, uh, not a good sign. But I'll pass that check without any problems. It's not illegal to operate out of your own kitchen. Should I feel bad? I feel kind of proud to be fair and free as a bird from the 9 to 5 life. Uh, half of restaurants reheat from the freezers of Cisco and Gordon Food Service. I mean, it genuinely just sounds like OP started a full-on business, and they're thriving. You're living in the year 3000. If you've not noticed, keep going, I say. That's fantastic. Wow, more things to add to my restaurant anxieties. Found out my dead best friend was in love with my wife. I'm writing this as a confession because I don't know where else to speak about this, and I don't want my kids finding out about this on my main account. My friend died a few months back due to heart problems. He was taking care of himself, so it was a shock to everyone, especially his wife who was with him at their house when he died. Due to this, she decided to move somewhere else, and because she and her daughter were still distraught, she asked me to pack up his stuff. He had some boxes in his basement, and after a while, I started feeling nostalgic and decided to look into them. I found pictures of us from when we were kids all the way to before we got married. That was enough to make me feel bad, and I just got back to taping them up. But one of the boxes seemed to be in much better condition, so I decided to check it in case it was something important. To my surprise, I found out it was pictures of him and my wife from when we used to hang out together, as well as more recent pictures from family reunions, the most recent being from my wife's birthday party. Alongside the pictures, there were letters that he never sent her. The first one dated two months before I met her. The last one was also the same date of her birthday party. There was one that stood out the most, and it was from after I started dating her. He wrote that his time had passed, and since my happiness was as important as his own, he would watch over us. I'll keep his box safe since it isn't my secret to reveal. He not only loved your wife, he loved you just as much. Exactly! This is... That is a... Genuinely? Was a really sweet read. Holy shit, what a tremendous human being. Who among us could really be sure we'd make the same sacrifice? I hope I would, but I'm so happy that people like him exist, even if I wouldn't be strong enough. Make sure your friend's wife never finds out about that box either. I cheated to get my bachelor's and my master's degree. Yeah, I cheated. I didn't write any of my papers. I didn't do any of the work myself. I stole a lot of work. Took only classes anyone I knew did and used all their work for it with minor changes. I made it through six years and got two degrees. I got a scholarship at a high school by cheating. I cheated during the SAT. I cheated most of my life and I feel a little bad, but not really. Thanks to a couple real ones for holding it down for me. Wouldn't have made it this far without you. I used to date a girl that would always cry to professors to get her grades raised from C's to A's. I remember the first time she did it, I was impressed. I couldn't believe it worked. She laughed and said she did it all the time and it nearly always worked. She was right. She kept doing it and I never saw it not work. I even witnessed her get an A on a paper she didn't even do and thus didn't turn anything in. The professor literally just gave her an A to stop her from crying. It became disturbing. Yeah, I had a friend in college mooch off me and he had a better career afterwards. This isn't a confession. It's a brag. Eight years ago, I caused a UFO panic. One college summer break eight years ago, my friends and I were bored. We remembered a demonstration from a high school science class of a solar balloon. This was just a really thin black plastic bag you'd fill with air, seal, then let out in the sun. The sun would heat the air in the black bag and the bag would become buoyant and float. We had the idea to find the cheapest, thinnest black plastic trash bags available and combine a bunch of them to make a huge balloon. We spent a few days driving around to Walmarts and dollar stores trying to find different brands to make the thinnest possible plastic bag and thinnest tape which would work the best. Finally, we took a number of them, cut off the bottom ends, and taped them together into a huge balloon, which we filled up with a leaf blower and then tied the end. After sitting out in the sun for a half hour or so, we'd done it. This is a picture my friend had taken as it was just becoming buoyant. <laughs> oh, dude, it looks like an obelisk of some kind. We had to mess around with how the tape was sealing the bags to use as little of it as possible as the weight of the tape added up and made the balloon harder to float. Shortly after this, the balloon got away from us further. Oh, oh no. Oh, it's going. It's gone. It looks like a leviathan. This was disappointing, but we made another one and got funny looks from cars driving by and were entertained for a bit. Shortly after that, this new balloon met its demise, smacking into a tree and getting popped. Oh well, mission success. A few years later, I happened across this news article. Police flooded with UFO sighting reports after residency large tube-like object over Somerset County. <laughs> The balloon that got away and had apparently blown a town over caused a big UFO panic. People were calling 911, the police, and local radio stations about it. Our boredom unintentionally created a UFO panic in central New Jersey. I moved out of the area, but when I get together with my friends, we always bring this up and have a good laugh. This is amazing. Funnily enough, I wrote the article you cited. That's a small ass world. I'm the sole reporter working the late shift at the same news organization. I just looked at our traffic and was like, what the fuck?
Why is this eight-year-old UFO article suddenly buzzing? Cheers, mate. I remember that day well. Created some fun into what I recall was a slow news day. This is so crazy. I'm actually the balloon. I floated out over the ocean and then sprung a leak and drifted down into the Atlantic. I joined a huge garbage mass about six years ago and have always wondered if anyone noticed me that day. Oh my f God, that was you? I live in the area and a bunch of people at Rutgers were talking about it and I thought they were out of their f minds. When I was younger, I saw a lady drop a hundred dollars. I picked it up and used all of it on Yu-Gi-Oh cards right in front of her. Basically, she dropped the a hundred dollar bill in one of those aisles of this game store. I picked it up and I remember wanting to give it back, but I was there to get Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I'd recently lost all my good cards to my friend in a bet. So this was a miracle of sorts to make a solid comeback. So I kept it. I thought the woman had left the store, so I went to go purchase my cards. Right as I gave my money to the cashier, she walks up behind me watching me buy my $100 worth of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. This isn't a normal thing to do. She said nothing though, and I left before she went to go buy her items, so I didn't have to see the look on her face when she realized. There is no doubt in my mind that once she realized she was $100 short, she would make the assumption it was the kid in front of her in line who spent $100 on cards. I just want to say I'm a different person now, smile. Yeah, well, I once found $10 on the floor in GameStop. I left it there as I assumed it was someone else's and I didn't want to steal. When I went to pay for my game, I noticed I was $10 short. I connected the dots and those $10 on the floor were mine to begin with. I went back and they were gone. I had to go back to my dad and tell him I lost part of the money he gave me. He screamed and shit, but went and bought the game for me. My brother found a wallet with $500. He actually did return it. She gave him $100 for returning it and he got himself some really nice name brand sneakers. Damn, I found a dude's wallet with over 3K in it along with his wedding band and the dude gave me a dollar as a reward. My brother, age 11, nine years younger, stole $3,000 from my mom's bank account to buy a Switch, a few games, and a Samsung Galaxy. Mom forgave him though. God, my parents are pushovers. Just depends on which kid though. They blamed it on the fact that he has no concept of online shopping. I'm pretty sure at that age and in this day of age, you know that a Visa card is real money. For three years, I switched my partner's tea in the morning because I couldn't deal with his fake snobbery. When my ex and I started dating, I used to make him a morning cup of tea as a cute gesture, and it stuck for the three years that we were together. It's a nice small thing you do to make someone's day, and it's a nice way to get to know how someone likes things doing. So my morning tea used to be any old tea bag, Yorkshire tea if it was on offer, a splash of milk, and the first cup always had a teaspoon of sugar. Every cup after was just tea and milk. My ex, however, had to have a very specific ritual. Thompson's Punjana tea, a teaspoon of milk, and absolutely no sugar. He was adamant that he could tell in a heartbeat when his morning cup of tea, and at the age of 33, he's never liked any other tea than Fortnum and Mason's Royal Blend. So in the beginning when he would stay at mine, I entertained this notion and used to make his morning tea the way he liked. Thompson's Pujana tea, a teaspoon of milk, and absolutely no sugar. He would always thank me and tell me that I make the best cups of tea and it was nice. Three times a week didn't kill me and it was a sweet gesture. Fast forward three months, when he would spend nearly every day of the week at mine but not moved in, he was very demanding of his morning ritual and being a student, I couldn't keep affording to buy that brand of tea. Besides, what was wrong with PG Tips or any non-branded supermarket tea? Tea is tea after all, it is just leaves. So I used to make his cup of tea with any tea bag and a teaspoon of milk and no sugar. I was always sure to only make it when he was in the shower or still in bed so he could never catch me out and initially he was dubious and was always asking to make sure it was Thompson's Punjana tea. He used to call it by its full name to emphasize how good it was. After a few trials of different teas, I finally found that sweet spot where he couldn't taste the difference. I would drink it with him and as he sipped, would go on about how you can taste the quality and that there really is no other tea like it. When we moved in with each other, it was a lot harder to disguise the fact that I was keeping the same box of tea and just filling it with regular tea bags, so I had to be a bit more clever. At the time, I was studying at college, so I was in control of weekly food shops and only really wanted to go twice a week to minimize costs, so we had more to spend on meals out. I used to buy one bag of his tea and two bags of mine a week and kept them in the drinks cupboard. When it came time to making his in the morning, I would take one of his tea bags and put it in my pocket, giving him one of mine instead, and I used to give my tutors at college his tea to drink during the day. He would always comment that I run out of my tea quicker because of the quality and that with Panjana, one bag is enough for a considerable amount of time. Little did he know. This went on for a couple of years and I never told anyone about it out of fear that he would find out, as after all, he really couldn't tell, so I ruined the fun. It was saving me money and it was sort of amusing. I never let him make a cup of tea unless I was 
away, so we never really had to find out. After we split up, we remained good friends, and I spent some time with him in our old flat. Every time I visit, he always asks me to make a cup of tea the way I used to for old time's sake, because everyone he's been with or dated after me can never make it taste the way I did. He even says that when he makes it himself with Panjana, that he can never make it taste right, and that I was some sort of special tea maker. I still haven't told him. Wow, I can feel the Britishness in this post. Britishness intensifies. God saving the queen intensifies. In it. <laughs> I wag one, my G's. What's your motives for the night, fam? Even as a Brit, this is too much for me. All these are just people being like, wow, this is a very British post. He even says that when he makes it himself with Panjana, that he can never make it taste right and that it was some sort of special tea maker. I still haven't told him. This is the funniest part. You retrained his taste buds and he's none the wiser and never will be. <laughs> you've, you've ruined it. This is the kind of story that messes with me. I'm paranoid of being with someone who does stuff like this or moves things or steal valueless items just to mess with my head. You may think it's just tea, but it's gaslighting and that can ruin people's trust and confidence and trust in their sanity. Next time, just tell him, buy it himself. I lied to a blind neighbor and told him I moved away. Well, why did you do that? Many years ago, I was standing on one of my balconies when a taxi driver was obnoxiously blowing his horn out and uh, yelling for a blind man to walk toward my voice from his own townhouse. That direction was toward traffic. My roommate and I went down and helped him to the taxi and scolded the driver for being so rude. I made the mistake of giving the blind neighbor my phone number so I could give him a ride in the future. Then the phone calls came and never stopped. And when I gave him a ride, he would ask for various detours. I'm very calculated by nature. If I, if he had told me beforehand where he wanted to go, it would be cool, but no. We'd be driving around and he'd throw in two to three extra places on each ride. And it came to be every day that he wanted rides. And he'd even call me to remind me to give him a ride. Not that was ever late or backed out. Finally, I had enough, so I gauged how blind he was. His response to that, he was blind as your bet. A week or two after he said that, I told him I had a job interview in the next city. A week after that, I told him I got the job and was moving away in a month. After I moved away, it was strange as hell walking by him in silence as he stood on the sidewalk. You know, I think it's important to take this post as an opportunity to reflect on how you could set boundaries in the future. There will be other metaphorical blind guys needing rides in the future. Yeah, this could have been solved by just saying, hey man, I don't want to do this so often. The blind guys were the friends we wish we hadn't made along the way. <laughs> I bet he could smell you and knew. What, like a dog? I was gonna say the sound of your footsteps, the way you walk, I guess, or sounds of your particular keys would have been a dead giveaway. I always know my boyfriend's coming up the stairs outside by those sounds, and I could imagine it would be noticeable thing even more so if you didn't see i hope he doesn't see this post it's a simple joke but eh, i'm a simple guy when i nannied i would read the journal of the mom oh you got free tea i was only 20 years old and i nannied for this little baby boy the mom seemed off she would sleep the entire time i was there in the mornings or go on three hour runs or sometimes would just go about her business around the house completely ignoring me one time we both sat in the living room while the baby was sleeping in his room i was reading a book studying and she sat there they're eating McDonald's and watching her show. She did not say a word to me the entire time. Well, one day when she was out, I snooped around and found her journal. I read the whole thing, then got sad for her. She was so unhappy in her marriage and in life. I ended up working for her for three years and we became close, but that first year was so uncomfortable and awkward. In retrospect, it seems very obvious that she was suffering from post-pregnancy depression. I mean, good on you for trying to lighten her load, OP. A little empathy and help can go a long way in helping someone to write out a depressive episode not feeling quite so alone or overwhelmed. I'm a guy with no kids, but all my friends are starting to have kids. After the first year, I always hear women talk about how great having kids is, and they didn't know they could love so much, blah, blah, blah. Don't get me wrong, I want kids. But I know they all can't feel that way, and particularly in the beginning. A new mom hearing this wouldn't be able to help but feel like a terrible mother if she didn't connect with her kid right away, or was having a hard go of it. There really wouldn't be anyone to turn to. Yeah, this isn't close to weird behavior. I've had a nanny for four years. I pay her a good wage so that I can do what I want to do, and if it's my choice to sleep or go to the gym or anything else under the sun, then it's just that, my choice. Sometimes I sit and chat and sometimes I don't. She's an employee and we do consider her part of our family, but really as long as she's being paid, I expect her to do her job the same no matter what I'm doing. Just my point of view. I call fake orders into a pizza place to get free pizzas. My husband works at a popular pizza chain. We call it piece of butt for the sake of rhyming. Ah. If orders are messed up or carry out orders don't show, the employees get to take the food home. Sometimes I order a 
pizzas under fake names and give the numbers of local businesses as callback numbers, and then purposefully never show up to pay for it. Nine times out of ten, my husband brings home the pizza I ordered. This is sinful pizza, yes I know, but sin pizza tastes better than honest pizza, inexplicably. Man, I got fired from a pizza place when I was in college giving a burnt pizza to a homeless old lady. My husband used to also work at Pizza Butt, and we always joked about doing this but never had to because his co-workers were shit at their jobs and he just brought home all their mistakes. My husband and I are currently going through a divorce, though. I think we're gonna have to start paying for pizza soon. People that steal pizza are thinking too small. Yeah, steal a large pie, then. I intentionally ask women well above the legal age limit for alcohol to show me their ID. I work as a cashier at a grocery store. Whenever a middle-aged woman who clearly looks older than 21 purchases alcohol from me, I intentionally ask them to show me their ID. I do this because somewhere deep down I feel that if I ask them for their ID, it creates an impression that they look far younger than they are. I do this every chance I get, regardless of how busy the line is, in hopes of making them feel younger and possibly happier. I remember back when I worked as a cashier, my manager said I have to ID everyone. She then informed me old ladies will find it flattering. Old dudes though? They don't like that shit. They just want their booze. Am dude, can confirm. My beard looks like it belongs on a 1,000 year old pirate and I get asked to prove it? Blasphemy. I'm in my mid 30s and regularly get ID'd. Clerks usually apologize and I always respond, it's all good. I'm old enough now that it's a compliment. And we have a laugh. I once told an elderly woman, have a nice day, young lady. She went and told the manager and I was written up. Well, she's no fun. Nothing makes me feel older than being patronized. You're perpetuating the stereotype that younger women are worth more than older women. I don't think it's the correct reason to card people. Law is the reason and that's it. I shit on my neighbor's doorstep. Well, was it justified? So back when I was 10, my dad asked me if I wanted to make $20. That's incredible. I accepted. The catch was I had to shit on our neighbor's doorstep. It was clear my dad had beef with this woman. She woke in the morning and tried to blame our chihuahua. My dad yelled at her saying that the shit was bigger than our dog. Impossible. The point is I don't feel bad. Forever daddy's girl. Wow. <laughs> that last line really got me. Wait, girls can poop? No, this post is clearly fake. Right, here's what you gotta do. You gotta piss in a CD box, put it in the freezer, and then slide your newly acquired disc of piss under your neighbor's door, and then let it melt. And now your neighbor's asking themselves how someone could take a piss into their home. Do this until they move out. You just brought us one step closer to women's equality and we thank you for your service. God bless. Did you ever find out what the beef was? No, but she was a mean lady, so she had it coming. One way or the other. I pretended I was selling something on Craigslist and got two strangers to meet awkwardly. Years ago, I made a new email address and got two potential buyers for a PlayStation that I was pretending to sell. I confirmed a date and time with both of them, decided on the mall near a certain store. I asked what they'd be wearing so I could find them. I gave them each other's description for myself and then went and hung out. One walked up to the other. You could tell there was an immediate confusion. They started arguing over who had what. You can see them get pissed once they realized what happened and wasted their time. They both stormed off on their phones. Sure enough, I got angry emails from both of them. I feel kind of bad about it, but it was a funny interaction to witness. Was anyone else hoping the end of the story would go? They instantly connected and decided to catch a movie together since they'd come all the way down to the mall anyway. That was five years ago. They're getting married today and they asked me to officiate. Rom-com gold right there in my honest opinion. Yeah, then everyone stood up and clapped. I used to do IT recruiting and you would get a ton of Indian people harassing you for jobs they can't do. Sometimes at the end of the day, we would set up two of them on a call telling them they both had interviews. Pretty mean, very funny. Insert Spider-Man pointing at Spider-Man pick. When I was a kid, I would wipe my ass with towels that were hanging up. You are disgusting. This is something I've never admitted to a single person. I'm not sure at what age I stopped doing this, but throughout most of my childhood, I had this OCD compulsion where every time I would finish wiping, I would stand up, walk over to the towel rack and give it one or two more thorough swipes. I couldn't not do it. I felt unclean if I didn't. It wasn't until I got a little older that I realized just how fucking fucked up it was. My older siblings spent their entire childhoods drying their faces off with my shitty remains. I've been mortified about it for years, but I'm actually in tears of laughter writing this out right now. Why does everyone in this house keep getting pink eye? Yeah, that is the sequel to the poop knife story. And when I was younger, I wouldn't wipe my ass. Yeah, you heard that right. Hey, stealing my thunder here. This is more common than one may think. Please no. Oh yes. And never leave your toothbrush in the guest bathroom, even with trustworthy friends. They're the worst.
most kind. I kicked a kid in his balls and he had to have one removed. Good God. This happened when I was around seven or eight years old. It was my first year in primary school and I had joined the school with some of my friends from the local feeder school in the area. One particular boy was a year older than us and was repeating the first year for some reason. He was of German descent from a very well-to-do family and a lot bigger than the rest of us. Possibly because he was embarrassed at repeating the year he was a bit of a bully. He often picked on me and some of my friends. I'm sure we probably escalated things at times too because I know he was teased for being German. So one day, standing outside class, I kicked him full whack in the balls. He buckled over, but I can't really remember much of what happened afterwards. We probably tucked tail and ran. I can't even say for sure what he deserved to be kicked at the time or if I just thought I was getting him back for previous behavior. Anyway, he missed school for a few days after and I heard some kids saying he was in the hospital. Soon after that, I was called in to speak to a teacher who, as far as I remember, dressed me down and explained he had gone home and his testicle was swollen to the size of a tennis ball. Holy shit. And it had to be removed. I don't really remember getting into much trouble about it, but I do remember some of the other kids going on about it in banter. He's the ball destroyer. <laughs> The chosen one. The details are hazy, but I felt so bad and I felt I was in so much trouble that I never even told my parents about it. This was made worse as my dad and his dad had gone to school together. Only found this out after seeing my dad chatting to his dad at a rugby match that me and the kid were playing one Saturday about a year after. I was freaking out the whole time they were speaking and then started feeling guilty that my dad might have been seen as rude by his dad for not apologizing for my action. It didn't come across that way as they seemed like old friends catching up, but I felt so guilty. I felt so awful about it. I mean, at the time, I didn't realize that it may have an effect on him being able to have children, but I felt like I'd done something so horrible and always expected my family to confront me about it. When I learned that the reproductive challenges might cause, the guilt was just amplified. The years that followed in primary school were mostly fine. On the odd occasion, he would have a go at me. I remember him having a slightly shorter fuse with me than others, but I think he ended up being okay and less of a bully. That said, he did try to drown me in a river at our primary school leavers camp as I'd pissed him off for some other reason, but mostly the in-between years went by without incident. I left that school to go to a different high school, so I I never maintained contact with him. I saw him once during my teenage years and we chatted for about five minutes. I remember it being friendly. I never, ever mentioned it. I hope he was able to have children. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry I never said sorry too. Holy f the size of a tennis ball? He must have kicked faster than the speed of light. I got kicked in the balls by a kicker on the football team. God damn, it hurt so bad. And I formed a cyst on my nuts, but never seen one swell up like a tennis ball. My God, you must have murdered that man's sperm sack. My own little confession you just reminded me. In an elementary, I grabbed a girl's earring during playground time. Not out of malice or anything. And it just ripped through her ear. Oh my God. My favorite thing working as a window washer was going through people's private possessions. Come on, not again. So I worked as a window washer in my small town in Sweden for about five years. Every morning you went to the warehouse where we had all of our stuff, drank a cup of coffee with your co-workers, and talked for a bit before getting out of the places you had to go for that day, and who you had to do them with. Our bosses were very keen on everyone getting to know everyone, so they changed up the teams every day. This meant sometimes you got to go out by yourself. The typical work day is the four to five houses and or apartments. Sometimes old people, they were always home. Sometimes families who were home because they knew we were coming. Not very often you got people who left their key under the mat and let us go inside without them being home. I liked this the most since you didn't have anyone breathing down your neck while you worked. And sometimes, once in a blue moon, you got a house with nobody home by yourself. I don't know if there's something wrong with me, maybe, but to me it felt like I'd struck gold because I knew I'd be able to walk around that house by myself, checking out every inch of it. I usually started by doing my job super fast, make sure I had some way of knowing if they got home. Usually I'd place a ladder somewhere close to the door so if someone came home, they had to move it. Then I got to work. I never looked to steal anything. It was pure curiosity. I looked through bathroom cabinets, nightstands, desk drawers, basically anything that you could open while making sure everything I touched was placed back exactly where it was before. During my years, I found diaries with dark secrets, cute secrets, and just downright weird secrets. I found used condoms in the teenage boy's room. In the daughter's and mother's nightstands. I found a gun under a mattress, which in Sweden is not something you see every day. One couple had a sex swing hanging in the bedroom, so it's not really something I needed to look for, but I thought it was strange that they didn't take it down when they knew people were going to be in the house. I once opened a teenager's MacBook and boom, Pornhub paused mid video. No password, no incognito window, nothing. Jewelry, expensive watches, and knives. One kid had three knives welded together like a ninja star, but with a handle. Like I said, never stole anything. That wasn't my goal. I just love going through other 
other people's shit. It's wrong, I know that, but I couldn't help myself. You ever wonder if your house guests snoop in your bathroom cupboards? Strategically place several marbles in the bathroom cabinets. Works every time. Yeah, it's weird to me that people just let a random stranger into their house when they weren't there. I always thought of window washers as people who only wash the outsides of big buildings. If it's someone's home, why don't the people living there just wash the insides themselves? Fair warning, odds are if they're fine with you in the house, they have cameras. Ooh. <laughs> I didn't think about that one, huh?